And a lot of times it blows up in their face because they say, where's God? Because a lot of times they didn't wait on the timing of God. The timing is so important in our faith. I believe we are in the last days. Now, I thank the Lord. I don't, this is not, I'm not dabbling in politics. I refuse to do that. I've done it before, and I'm sorry, but I wanted to hear my heart. I, because of this is my belief and my convictions, I am so excited about overturning, even though it's not overturning every state, but abortion. Thank God for that. They put it back in the states. And now we, as as citizens, if you want it, you can vote for it. But I'm so thankful now that that has been pulled down, Republican or Democrat. I'm thankful for that. And and so that is my conviction. That is my heart. And uh, so that's nobody else's but my conviction. So, but I thank God for it. Let's look here. God's timing is so important. Now, Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 6 says something. This is amazing. Look at what happens. Let's read this together. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 6. Bring your Bibles. I hope you can get your Bibles, get your pens, get your papers. Uh, Yes, you can go back and see this on YouTube or see this on Facebook Live. But there's something about something maybe God may deposit something in your spirit right here, right now. So write it down. Uh, So let's look here. There is a right time. Let's say it together. There is a... And a... To do what? But we know what? We know so little. See, the problem is timing is a skill. The sons of Issachar understood their time. I'm afraid today the church don't understand the times that we're living in, the things that we're facing, the, the, the things that we as a church, not just destiny, but the church around the world. We are, Now, again, this is my personal conviction. I believe Jesus Christ is coming soon. But Pastor Steve, didn't you hear that when you were a child? Yes. But the things that we're seeing are not what I saw when I was a child. You can squint and say, well, maybe, but now we're seeing wars and rumors of war. We're seeing the plagues. We're seeing a a lot of stuff happening around our world today. And I just, if nothing else, if he doesn't come until, you know, 500 years, I don't know. But the thing that I want to encourage us is our responsibility to be ready. And to be ready in such a way to learn his timing so that we are not behind him, nor are we... uh, Ahead of him. So that's where the went and the sent goes, you know. Some just went, but they were not sent. So we must learn to sense when to go fast and when to go slow. You see, the thing is, every great accomplishment involves the element of timing. Wise people know how to, um, to literally cooperate with the Holy Spirit. That is called walking in the Spirit. Wise people know and learn how to cooperate with what is spiritual, and that means we're beginning to learn to walk in the Spirit. How do you learn that? Sometimes by trial and error. Go back to His Word. We'll find out about five or six things a day. When to go fast, and this is not an exhausted list, but at least it helps us. There are 15 times in Jesus' life that it said the word Jesus immediately. Look at that. Say that with me. Jesus immediately. There are sometimes it, it takes responsibility immediately. Now. Now. All right? So to learn how to wait and learn how to go is very important for us to see what I believe God is preparing us for, and I believe it's revival. There are things that God is doing right now that he's doing in the Spirit that I want to be on target with what he's saying and doing in our community. Amen or amen. amen. Now, look, it was not just Jesus who said that had 15 times immediately. Look at Paul. He sensed an urgency. 1 Timothy 6.12 out of the message run hard and fast in, look at that, run hard and fast in the faith. First Corinthians chapter 9 verse 24, run in such a way as to get the prize. Run, don't stop, don't drag your feet, don't wait, wait for until something good happens. Now, go. He says in 1 Corinthians 9 26, I run straight to the gold with purpose in every step. Philippians chapter 3 verse 12. He looks there in the Good News Bible. He says, I run to win. 
many times, if we're not careful, we don't run. We just wait for our feelings to catch up. And that is not what God has called us. We are not led by our feelings. We are led by the Holy Spirit. Amen or me? There you go. If I, if, listen, if I went by my feelings this morning, I had a problem with mine over mattress. I heard that rain. Oh, Lord, it sounded so good. Last night was thunder. I was like, oh, yes. I felt so good. Oh, I woke up this morning. All right, let's look this morning. When does God want us to begin? When does he want us to start moving fast? When does he want us to move fast? Let's look at here. Get your Bibles. Let's look at this because we're going to look at a lot of scriptures. I'll have them up here, but I encourage you to write them down. And I pray. I told you about me carrying my Bible. That's when I was in, a, in high school. This is it right here. This is the Bible that I, one day I won, and it was given to me as a gift. I wore it out. Somebody put another binding on it. But I'm telling you, you cannot bring... You cannot bring a pocket knife to a war. Can I get a witness? You know, I know some of you got your phones. That's great. But don't forget the Word of God. Carry it with you. Believe This is what I used to have in my arm when I'd walk through people smoking weed. And right here, I, you know, there's smoke right there in the middle of everything. Why? Because I'm telling you, when I got saved, I got radically saved. And I, wasn't, I didn't try to push it on nobody, but I was a bus driver. And I would go to lunch break. I'd go to my, I'd go to my bus and sit here and just read the Bible. And I'm telling you, it began to produce fruit in me. And the same with you today. Amen or amen? So please keep that in mind. Yes, some of you have it on your phones, which I do too. But something about when you come to the house of God, make it an act of faith and step out with your Bibles. Amen? When do you move fast? Number one, when God tells you to do something. The Bible is filled with instructions for life. God expects us to obey His commands. There are things written in His Word that we don't need interpretation of. Well, what did he mean by that? Thou shalt not kill. Let me think about what he means by that. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Let me see what he meant by that. This is not, this is not open for a suggestion. Amen or me. This is what his word said. So those are, that's where we start at is we look at his word and those are swear that we can start with that. And then there will be things that he begins to enlighten us in. And like Mark chapter 1, 17 through 18, Jesus said to them, come, follow me. So Simon and Andrew did what? They waited for a feeling and went back, talked to their parents because you know they were fishermen and they're going to leave their boats. And oh my, we can't do that because I got to, they may not support me going to college. Somebody help me out here, please. It says there, so the Andrew and Simon immediately left their nets and followed him. They didn't ask questions. They recognized that this is not just an ordinary man, and this is not just an ordinary command. In Psalms 119, verse 60, don't, without delay, I hurry to obey your command. Obedience and hurry is a great quality. There are things in your life that are going to have to be an immediately situation. Immediately, right now. Right now. Now, here, okay, watch this. What if you told your child and said, go do something? And they sit there and they say, okay, I'll think about it. Every parent knows, watch this. Delay, delayed obedience is disobedience. Let me say it again. Only the youth pastor got it. Did you hear he's back? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pastor Steve, preach it again. Thank you, I will. Thank you, Lamar. We can all hear him. Watch this. If we're talking to our children and they look at us and say, go clean your room. Well, I'll think about it. <clears throat> I'll think about it. You are interpreting that. Every parent knows delay obedience is disobedience. 
What has God told you to do that you still haven't done? What are you waiting on? The second thing that we need to look at is when I need to ask or offer forgiveness. That's when, this, is, this is not a, well, let me think about it moment. If you need to offer forgiveness, now I always thought forgiveness is for the other person until I begin to discover uh, forgiveness is for me. Because there's going to be people in your life, they're not going to forgive you. I don't care what you do. The good news is that's not your responsibility. What you're called to do is to release them and forgive them of the debt you owe, that you think they owe you. I had to forgive my father. And he did not really do anything except be what he knew how to be and do. But my expectations of him and my relationship was different than what I felt he was giving me. I felt he should be at my football games. I felt he should have done this. I felt he should have done these things. So I began to build up resentment until one day I went to the prayer closet and I said, Edward Sidney Branch, I forgive you. And I just began to, I didn't know anything about releasing stuff. I just began to pray and release him. Do you know what the Lord began to show me? He began to show me. He didn't know. He was not able to show me what I expected because his father died when he was, a, he didn't even go to, I think, the second or the third grade. He, he worked in a cotton mill. So what I thought that his time, his time was so valuable to him, he forgot about me. The Lord showed me this. He said, Steve, he was not able to give you that. Why? Because he thought love was work. Because he provided for you. See, I was holding the debt of my father that I couldn't, he could never pay. So it wasn't his problem, it was my problem. So when I went to the Calvary and I forgave him as God forgave me, something happened to me. I began to see a whole new life and a new light of love. Jesus says in Matthew 5, 23... If you're giving an offering at worship, all right, let's, keep, let's see where we're at. We're at the altar and we're worshiping. And you suddenly remember that someone has something against you. What would you think you would do? Well, the scripture here says what? Leave your offering and do what? Go immediately. Say that word. Go immediately to that person and be what? Then you come back to worship and offer your gift. For your own health, watch this, for your own health, you need to act quickly. Why? Your body was not designed to carry guilt or resentment. All right, we can get spiritual with this. Woo! Feel it. Your flesh ain't going to feel this one. Your flesh is going to be screaming because here's what's going to do. Don't, 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 don't. Use worship as an excuse to procrastinate. I'm worshiping. I can't, I don't have time to go. Jesus says it is more important for your heart to get right than it is for what you can bring to worship me with. I'm more concerned about you. You go get it right because what you're going to bring to me has nothing because you just want to show or what I don't know. But you cannot use worship as an excuse to procrastinate, to delay. Who do you need to reconcile with today? Well, they just did me wrong. In Celebrate Recovery, there's something we call a letter you never send. Because if you write it or tell somebody, it's going to do more harm than good. So what you probably need to do is sit down and before God and just pour your heart out in a letter and never send it. Get it out. Confess your faults one to another. Now here's what I love about CR. Confess your faults one. We don't go blowing out our sins all the time. But there are times we open up and people have things like a volcano inside them. That they're hurting, they're broken, they're busted, they're disgusted. But they have someone that would pray with them and listen to them. Because it's, the Bible says in James, confess your faults one to another. That you pray one for another that you may be healed. When does the healing happen? When you get it out because Satan cannot use it against you anymore. Come on, amen. When do you need to act fast? When you feel tempted. When you feel tempted. That's when you need to act. You cannot stay and play with it. Here's why. 
To defeat temptation, we need both pre-what? Preventative and emergency tactics. Don't just resist temptation, but run and flee and escape. That means that you're at a party and you're not doing drugs, you're clean and you want to stay that way, you want to continue to make your body a holy temple of the Lord, you go to somewhere and you're around somebody's friends, they start pulling out weed, I gots to go. Why? Because this is not who I am and that's not glorifying what well, I can witness to them. Don't you use that as an excuse because Satan will tempt you with that. You're here to be a witness. Listen, some of you are not strong enough right now to withstand the pool of drugs. Get out of there. Run, 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 run. Get out of there because if you don't, you'll be trapped in it. Get out of there. Don't even, well, I didn't know there was going to be weed. That's not, I understand that. But don't you even sit there. If they pull out weed or a needle, get out of, why don't you try this? Today, please listen to me. Please, generation, listen to me. There is not just drugs on the street. It is poison out there now. You can get drugs and deliver it to your house off the internet. And the problem is, is that what you think like a Xanax or something like that can be completely 100%, nothing more than fentanyl. Three little grains can take down a man 250 pounds. That is horse tranquilizers. Listen, an officer not far from here would pull over a gentleman. He had the fentanyl in his trunk and praise God. We, they had somebody who was an EMT with them on this run. This police officer did not touch it. He opened the trunk of this car and the fentanyl fumes. He had an overdose. And if that EMT was not there to shoot him with Narcan, let me tell you, his life would have ended right there, and he did not do That's how dangerous this poison is. I'm not calling it a drug. It is what I call it. It is a poison. Church, I never thought in my life that I'd ask this church to do this. I want to encourage us because we reach people and you're touching people out here on the streets. We'd love to train you on Narcan because I'm telling you, run up on somebody. That fentanyl is a synthetic opioid. It, you can actually block their brains with those opioids that comes in. It will block it and it will save their lives. Well, I, they deserve to die. What if it was your child? Do you want me to offer that to them? I'm not endorsing drugs. Get off the mess. Somebody looked at me one time and said, Pastor Steve, I just believe you're going to be the first church in this area to have needles. I said, oh, no, we won't. I said, oh, no, we won't. I want them off the needle. I want them off the needle. I want them delivered off that mess and not sitting there and say, well, you can just come because we want to keep you safe. No, safety is get off that thing. Jesus can free you today. People love you right where you're at. Let them do it. Flee from it. Run. 1 Timothy 6, 11, run away from evil things. 1 Corinthians 10, 14, run away from worshiping idols. Idolize, idolize, put God first. 1 Corinthians 6, 18, run away from sexual sins. In the moment, in the moment, never get in a mental argument with temptation. You will lose. You cannot wrestle with the thought, what if I just do it one time? What if I do it one time? One time is never enough. Don't sit there and play with the thought, well, if I drink, I might fool mom and dad. Right now in this day and hour, it's not a matter of fooling mom and dad. This could cost you your life, and you are not invincible. I have buried them young, and I have buried them old. You are not Superman. You're not made of crypt, whatever that stuff was. You are a human being, and one hit, one hit, 14-year-old child out here in California, mom and dad is a doctor. He ordered some stuff off the line. He thought it was Xanax. It's off the line. What he didn't know, one hit was fentanyl, and it took this child's life. Resist. Don't take nothing from a party. Well, this, oh, here's something for your headache. Don't take it because you don't know what it is. 
if you don't want to get if you don't want to get stung if you don't flee flee escape number 4 Bethany would you come please when i make a promise to god we all make promises to god we've forgotten or we got lazy about i'm not going to eat anything for the year of 2022 that's foolishness hello that's craziness. Well, I, I'm just, we, we go off in some absurd ideas. And then we make promises to God. Then we feel guilty. And, and what we need to understand is Ecclesiastes 5.4. When you make a promise to God, keep it as quickly as possible. He isn't happy with foolish people. Don't do, do what you promise to do. We've all made promises to God and we've forgotten or we've gotten lazy about it question is what promise do you need to make right today maybe to witness maybe to read your bible maybe start serving what is it today that you made a promise lord if if pastor gets up there today and he's a red shirt and he tells you he needs people back there as a greeter i know it's a sign from you well here's your sign hello I'm waiting for a feeling. Isn't there a song about waiting for a feeling or something? No, that's not what he's called us. We're not based. We are spiritual. We're not based on our feelings because our feelings would have kept me in bed this morning. Hello? I would have stayed there because I love to hear the rain. I wish we had a metal roof. I could stay out in a shed somewhere. I think that's where Pam's going to put me anyway. I just love the rain. It's just something about it, you know? The thunder, the lightning, as long as it don't hit the tree beside our house. Hallelujah. I love it. When do we need to move fast? When I made a promise to God, I'm going to read His Word. I'm going to witness. I'm going to invite people. I'm going to do these things. That something is now within your right and your power. Number five. When do I need to move when I have an opportunity to do good. Proverbs 3.27 says, don't withhold good from those who deserve it. While, watch this, while it is in your power to act. We make all kinds of excuses. Things have settled. When things settle down in my life, let me say something to you. With our world today, I don't know when that's ever going to be back to normal. I looked at people and I said, there's, there's, we've been cut in more than half. I'm not sure some people are even coming back. I don't know what to say. I, I, I told our staff, we're just going to have to start all over. We're going to just do what we're called to do and just don't get discouraged. Don't quit. Don't give up. We're going to keep doing what we know to do going to keep faithful in the small things in our community, trying to make a difference. But we're good at making excuses. Ecclesiastes 11.4 If you want the perfect conditions, if you wait for the perfect conditions, you will never get anything done. Well, I'm going to wait for somebody else to do it. Maybe God has put the dream and the vision in your heart. And they're waiting on you to step up. Reasons for doing it now, watch this, because there is no guarantee about tomorrow. Amen. John 9, 4 says it this way. Jesus said, all of us must quickly carry out the task assigned us by the Father who sent us because there is a little time left before the night falls and all work comes to an end. Every day, God gives you a little test to practice kindness, to practice His love. The question is, what kind of act have you been intending to do, but you still haven't done it? When do we need to act fast? When God offers us salvation. 
2 Corinthians 6, 2 says that God is ready to help you right now. Today is the day of salvation. Well, I'm going to wait, Pastor. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait until all the circumstances. I'm going to wait till I quit smoking. I'm going to wait till I quit doing drugs. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. Today is your day. It's not, we're not promised tomorrow. I'm not going to tell you if you don't give your heart to Jesus today that you're going to walk out here and get hit by a meteorite. I'm not trying to scare you into salvation. If I can't tell you about the love of God, what good is it if I can tell Because there's going to be a day you're going to quit being afraid. But you'll never, ever run out of his love. To know that he loves you. Some of us have been putting off stepping across that line. Not to decide is to decide. I'd like to help us settle that today. There is God's love is no more greater than it is today for you. He loves you so much. And you may feel so unworthy. Or again, just like, just like me when I was young, I was... I was going to be a, and again, every kid has this dream, be a pro football player. I remember I was bargaining with God. I was at Emmanuel College, and I went over to uh, University of Georgia, talked to the coaches about being a walk-on. And he said, yeah, of course they do that to everybody. Yeah, you can come. I remember the pull of God in my heart. I began to bargain with God. Here's what my plan was when I was a little bit younger than this. Here's what my plan was. I was going to play pro football, get married a couple times. This is me thinking this. Get married a couple times, party, drink, and then my knees would be blown by then, and then, and then I was going to come to Jesus because I had enough Jesus in me to be dangerous. <laughs> then I was going to give my heart to Jesus and go around the circuit and tell how good God was. But God's plan was completely different than mine. Follow me, Steve. Remember wrestling with the, quick, the, the thought of going to Georgia, University of Georgia, or go to Florida? And I made up my mind. I'm saying I'm going to Florida, and I've never looked back. What decision have you been pushing behind you? And you feel like you can figure this out, this puzzle of your life. Step across the line today. That pull that you feel today is not Steve Branch's message. It is the pull of the Holy Spirit. Pulling you right now to say, come to me all you that are weary. and Please come across this auditorium. I'm not asking you to join the church. I'm just asking you to come in faith to Jesus Christ. So if you don't know Jesus today and you want to, we want to help you and pray with you this morning as a family. If that's you today, or rededicate your life, I don't care, whichever one, just lift up your hand. I want to pray with you. Are there those here today? Yes, thank you. Are there others here today? Those who are watching us by Facebook, how about you today? How about you? How about you, ma'am? How about you, sir? How about you, teenager, who just stumbled across this? We're going to pray with these people. Would you pray with us, too? All I'm going to ask you, if you prayed this prayer with us, a minute in your heart, would you please just put, put your information or just private message us so we'll know we want to send you something. Would you, let's all pray together. Why don't you invite Jesus right where you're at? First, we must believe that he is the Son of God. That he is the Son of God, the Son of God, born of the Virgin Mary. He lived, he died, he rose again. He's coming back soon. If you believe that in your heart, let's pray together. Jesus, I believe. Come on, let's pray it all out loud together. Jesus, I believe. Come on. You are the Son of God. That you came to live and die for my sins. You arose the third day. And you're coming back soon. Forgive me of my sins. Come into my life today. From this day forward, I give you my all. 
Forgive me of my sins. I turn from them to follow you from this day forward. In Jesus' name, I confess this. And I confess that you are my Lord and you are my Savior. In Jesus' name, come on, let's give him praise right now across this room. Hallelujah! Amen, amen, amen. Those that raise your hands, Corey, can you help me up here? We've got some, we've got a book for you. Would you please, if you prayed and raised your hand and believed that in your heart, would you, we're going to be up here. Thank you so much for joining us today. Join us this Wednesday night. We love you. We appreciate you so much. God bless you. For those that gave your heart to the Lord, come up here. We want to talk to you and just, again, give you a gift to help you grow in your faith. We love you. Thank you for being here. Go out there and make a difference for Jesus. We love you.